I'm going to do a quick unboxing of the Cobalt 12 inch uh, sliding miter saw. Uh, it's dual bevel. It's, uh, I believe, 15 amps. Yep, 15 amps. I believe this one has the uh, double laser as well. I've never really been a huge fan of the lasers. Uh, I mean, it's more of a, a gimmick than anything. Uh, so this is an upgrade. I had the, uh, what is it, the seven and a quarter inch blade one. And I had it for like five years. Loved it. Uh, paid like $100 for it. Uh, worked great. I ended up giving it to my dad. Uh, I've got a project coming up where I'm going to use be cutting a lot of 4 by 4s which you can do with a 7 inch but you have to like cut half flip the board over and then cut it again uh, and the project that I'm thinking about doing some uh, uh, bunk beds and I'm going to need to make quite a few cuts on 4 by 4 posts and you know my dad uh, I let him borrow the 7 inch and he liked it so I figured, you know, it's a good time to go ahead and upgrade. I used the other one for like five years. The only problem I ever had was the laser stopped working on it after about a year. That wasn't actually the saw's fault. Uh, it was stored in a garage, in a shed, one of those metal out, you know, sheds. And I guess it got too hot. The battery popped open and it corroded the, uh, the contacts for the battery. Uh, I probably could have fixed it, but I really just didn't care. Uh, didn't really use the laser much anyway so we're gonna be upgrading to this one all I've done so far it comes with these straps on it I cut the straps and open the box just that way I have a free hand sorry for the poor quality video this is done on a phone it looks like we got the instructions taped to the top this is the clamp. That is really heavy, actually. It's a pretty heavy clamp. Oh, this is the uh, the bag, this dust bag. So we got typical foam. Got a bag over the top of it. Alright, see if I can turn this. So, I mean, it's pretty straightforward as far as packaging. It looks like it's all pretty much together. I think you just put the bag on, put the, uh, the clamp on. Uh, give me just a second. I'm gonna have to use two hands to pull this out of the box. It's not not quite as light as the uh, seven inch. The seven inch you can lift with one hand. This one's a little bit heavier, but it's not like ridiculous. So just a second. We'll be right back. All right, just like that. It's magically out of the box. So I just lifted it out, put it on the table. So that's what you're getting as far as packaging wise. Now, I will say this one's quite heavy compared to the, uh, the 7 inch. It's, I mean, it's not ridiculous. You can move it around as needed, but it's a lot heavier than the 7 inch, which is to be expected. Uh, I'll say for someone that needed to just do little stuff around the house, the 7 inch is more than adequate. You cut 4x4s all day long. Uh, I want to say you could cut up to eight inch boards, uh, as far as away from the, uh, the fence. I think it was about eight inch forward. I think this one can do, I think it's 16 inches. So, and that's one of the reasons I'm get, I got this is so I could cut the four by four posts easily, but also, uh, to have that extra width for other projects, it just... Uh, so I don't have to basically break out the table saw as often. So we've got something over here. 
not sure what, oh, that's the cord. So it looks like they bag up the cord. So it looks like the blade has some a box on it. We got our. Let's see, does it go down? So it's gonna be hard to do this with one hand. One second. All right. So it's push it down. It locks it. Pull it up. Unlocks it. Uh. And of course, it's not bolted down, so I can't really do it with one hand because you got to hold the uh, hold the base so it don't spin. But let's see, it's got pin this one, and my camera is not wanting to focus very well. But if you push down on the saw with my elbow, pull the pin out, it should go up. There it goes. Oh, why are we not focusing? There we go. All right, you got a styrofoam block, shipping block, I guess. And there we have it. And there's the business end of it. I don't remember how many teeth this blade has on it, but this guard's pretty cool looking. I wonder if it's got batteries in the laser yet or not. Let's see. How does this one turn on? It's, yeah, it's that right there. Doesn't look like there's any batteries in the laser. So I don't know for sure if this one has batteries for the laser, if it runs off the plug. Which I did think that was kind of weird. Like, it plugs in, why have batteries for the laser if you can just run it off the power that it plugs into. You know what I mean? This is different though. Not sure how much I like that. The safety switch. This this feels cheap. I won't lie. It's like it's like real pokey, like pointy here. And my phone does not want to focus guys. Sorry about that. But it has a pretty sharp edge right there. Not like it's going to cut you sharp, but like it's uncomfortable. It's not very rounded. Uh, so that almost feels like that was an afterthought there. Real plasticky. So, all right. So first impressions. I think it's a probably a decent saw. Uh, the trigger system. I don't like. You gotta so you push down on this. This is your safety. Push down on that to be able to pull it in. If you see so it doesn't go in all the way, and you push the yellow piece down. Uh, it's not very comfortable for the grip. Uh, the old the old one I had had just a trigger button here. You just pull that and pull it down. So that'd take a little bit of getting used to, but not a big deal, I don't think. Let's see for our. I think this goes. One second. All right. So the uh, to cut your bevels, you got this blue pal uh, paddle here, which on the old saw you had a knob around the back side. To loosen it uh, didn't really bother me now it makes sense with this bigger saw to have the paddle up front because it is more of a reach as with the other saw is quite small so that wasn't an issue uh, but yeah so anyway so you push up to release it and and like it can go over oh, it's hard to do with one hand with this thing sliding around but so what I noticed I was looking you got this here that adjusts it's like a stopper for presets if you can focus Ooh. there we go 
So you get the stopper and it's color coded for your presets. That's kind of neat. You just twist it to what you want it to. And it bumps up against. There's a screw here. Sorry for the dark image. Let's see if we can focus here. So you got that screw there. There's your presets. It's color coded. You just twist it to what you want your preset at. And I also noticed you've got this adjustment here. You can do single bevel or double bevel. Uh, which, at first I was like, well, why is that even necessary? But, uh, you know, at first I was like, well, why don't you just always have it at, at double bevel to where you can just twist it over either way, right? But then I realized it doesn't have a stop. So if you put it on single bevel, it'll stop at your 90 degree cut. You see? So you get your zeroed out right there. So that, that actually makes sense. Uh, to where you don't have to really worry about it. I can push this back down. There we go. Uh, so you just switch it back to single and then you can e easily push it up and it'll stop at your to do your 90 degree cuts or your straight up and down cuts. That makes sense. Uh, it's, that's a pretty smart idea. So then we got these. We'll slide out. Let's see, we got this adjustment here just to adjust your fence. I think this one may not. There it goes. Oh, okay. I was like, well, I want it to come out. There's a grabbing a handle, so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. The handle kind of should have been attached to this, but whatever. So this slides out. Gives you, I think that's looks about another foot of distance here. You got a butt stop. You can butt your wood up against that. So that's handy if you want to make multiple cuts. You can measure it out and adjust your stop, lock it down, and then you can easily butt your wood up against there and have it the same size cut each time. So that's handy. I've got a uh, stand that I'm going to be using this on that also has something similar to this slide out with a stop on the end same thing on this side we've got an allen key here it's good that it comes with its own storage this is uh where you would put that that clamp in again this is to adjust your fence same as the other side you have your stop for your adjustments here uh, your presets that's handy but I, I kinda wish that it had indents uh, instead of this where you had to adjust it if we would just like click over into presets, that would be kind of cool. Because that's what this does here. Uh, you see you got these indents here for presets. To where when you're turning it, it just latches into these notches and you'll get your presets. It'd be nice if it was like that for that. Uh, and then you wouldn't have to worry about that adjustment. But I don't think it would be a big deal. Uh, you've got... Right offhand, I'm not sure what that's for actually. Uh, see, because you got a stopper here. Yeah, right offhand, I'm, I'm actually not sure what this one is for. Uh, unless maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but this, you can adjust this and it'll push down on there. Uh, to where you, it will only go down a certain depth. So if you want to notch out your wood, you can do that. 
and by adjusting this you can make it to where it only goes down a certain depth into the wood and then you could repeat the cut and have it the exact same each time i used that a lot on my with my old my old saw uh, and then you have this pen here which it's hard to do with one hand but it's a locking pen that keeps the blade down in the stored position you've also got this adjustment here which locks your slide it actually slides quite well uh, yeah it's a pretty smooth slide um, you would kind of think with a heavier saw that you might have some issues there but yeah, slides pretty good I think you can adjust it yeah you just leave it all the way open I was gonna say maybe you can adjust it for some resistance but yeah who needs that right all right let's uh give me one sec I'll get the uh dust collector and the uh clamp put on one sec all right so the uh dust collector just snaps in there super easy it's even got a little piece that comes out about that far so your opening is here and this piece comes out to about there that just holds the bag open otherwise it would pull down and uh would pinch the bag and it wouldn't fill up this guy goes raise this up a little bit all right got that and this just tighten this down and so you can adjust it Raise it, lower it, whatever. Seems to hold pretty well. So, this is one thing that always annoyed me about the other saw. Uh, I think they should just give you two of these. The other saw has one similar. It's not this tall. But, of course, because the fence is way shorter on the other one. But... So you can put one on each side. I think they should give you two of them because if you're making 90 degree cuts, it's uh, it's just convenient to have two. If you not necessarily because you need to clamp it on both sides, but just because depending on where I'm positioned, I might have more room on this side before you hit the wall uh, or that side. Uh, just depends on what I'm doing. So I might be clamping it on either side, depending on what I'm doing. Now this one's not as big of a deal, because it does have a thumb screw. The other one had a Phillips, with just a big Phillips. So anytime you wanted to switch the clamp from one side to the other, you had to go track down a, a large Phillips to open it and move it. Or if you just wanted to remove it altogether, same thing, you had to track down a, a Phillips. Which... Not a huge big deal, but it was kind of an annoyance. I'd like, I'd, I'd really like it if they just added another one. So you'd have one for each side. Uh, uh, some kind of storage for them would be nice if it would just clamp down on the back or something. So when you're not using it, just a small thing that uh, would just be nice to have. It does have bolt holes to where if you wanted to bolt it down. Uh, like I said, I've got a... Uh, portable uh, workstation cart thing that it will mount to that I have the other one mounted to which is it's a uh, it's actually a cobalt uh, system that is meant for these and works pretty well I'm not real sure about with this larger one so the other one I would actually just leave it clamped on 
and uh, it's like a dolly, like it folds up into a dolly. And the other one I would leave it clamped on and I would just slide it all the way down to the bottom and then you could just grab it and roll it off. This one is probably going to be too heavy to do that because if you leave it clamped on, uh, when you set the dolly up, it's going to want to fall over uh, just because of the, the weight. So, I mean, which is not a big deal because the thing has a bracket that you attach to the bottom with just a, a quick release. So removing it's not a big deal. Uh, it's just one thing to keep in mind. So, yeah, there's first impressions. Sorry it's not a good video. It is shot on my cell phone that does not like to focus for some reason today. Uh, as you can tell, Christmas tree's still up. House is a mess from Christmas, but... Normally I don't really do these videos, but I didn't really find any online that really talked much about the 12 inch. They have quite a few reviews on the 10 inch, which is very similar. It's really just a different size. I think it has all the same features though. Uh, but I figured, you know what, let's post something with the 12 inch one. Uh, after I've actually done a project with it, I, I might give it another review. I don't really see any potential issues right off the bat. Son's over there. He's watching YouTube videos with his headphone on. Uh, but yeah, so there we go. I'll see if this needs batteries or not for the laser. We'll see how that goes. But there you go. There is my first impressions and unboxing of the 12 inch double bevel uh, sliding miter saw. Bye.